Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture today. In this lecture, we are going to learn about intraparenchymal hemorrhage. So we have completed about the extradural, subdural hemorrhage, hemorrhage. So let us now learn about intraparenchymal hemorrhage. So what is intraparenchymal hemorrhage? So here if you see the hemorrhage is not present either in between the layers or outside the brain but now the hemorrhage which is there that has now entered the brain itself. So if you see juda matter, prarachnoid membrane, pia matter, drawing all these has left very less space for drawing the brain. So this is the thing. I'm sorry. Okay. Now, here in the brain, if there are uh, some hemorrhages which are found, if this is the brain, two hemispheres of the brain, if there are hemorrhages which are found in the parenchyma of the brain, those are called as intraparenchymal hemorrhages. So, hematoma, hemorrhages or hematomas. So, what are the etiological features of this intraparenchymal hemorrhages? Most commonly, it can be due to hypertensive reasons or it can be due to AV malformations. Either of these can cause this intraparenchymal hematomas or hemorrhage. So, these intraparenchymal hematomas or hemorrhages, so this can mainly present with delayed neurological deficit. Immediately, you don't have have any effect but slowly the area where the hematoma is developed based on that the patient develops delayed neurological deficit and then the chance of this delayed neurological deficit uh, this uh, will occur within 24 hours of time so the patient are patients first when they come to the OPD we will image them we will do a CT scan of that image if that CT scan is normal then we will have to subject the person again after 24 hours to a second CT scan to see these focal neurological deficits in order to look at the area where the focal neurological deficit is seen uh, based on the clinical features we can identify it now what are you going to do it so the main treatment options here is you will have to do a craniotomy obviously and you will have to evacuate the clot which is present, evacuate the blood which is present or bleeding or hematoma. In such cases you will have to, uh, you don't do for every case of this intraparenchymal hemorrhage craniotomy. Why? Because if you do a uh, craniotomy, if there is a bleeding here then you will have to um, you know, open the cranium, uh, drill the cranium, open it, and then you'll have to approach it through all the layers, and then you will have to cut the brain part, brain parenchyma, and then you'll have to enter the hemorrhage which is present or clot which is present in the brain, and you'll have to get it out. You'll have to evacuate it. That is difficult, you know. Even uh, see this area which is there, this part. If you see this part, this part is completely normal. You don't see any difference in this part. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Okay, 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 okay. You know, this part which is there, this is completely normal. You don't have any problem here. There is only hemorrhage here. But in order to drain this hemorrhage, you will have to approach it through this view. Through this, you'll have to approach it. That is difficult. So, because of that, so the, that is the only reason why we don't attempt. Uh, this craniotomy in all the cases we will do craniotomy only and only if there is uh, indications so if the clot volume is more than 50 centimeter cube then we do a craniotomy or if the clot volume is more than 20 millimeter cube and there is neurological deficit which is seen by Glasgow chroma scale of 6 to 8 or that is whether there is, if there is any neurological deficit in such cases you can do a craniotomy and if there is a midline shift of uh, more than 5 millimeters even then you can do a craniotomy or if there is a basal cistern compression in such cases you will have to do a craniotomy so these are the different uh, places where you do a craniotomy so this is about the intraparenchymal hemorrhage so thank you guys for watching my lecture in our next class mostly tomorrow i'll upload about the treatment of all these injuries and all the other types of injuries which are available so thank you guys for watching my lecture thank you please subscribe my channel for new lectures thank you